Before we head on to code a game with Godot, I wanted to talk about something that happened recently. A Chinese developer, GQLim, I hope that's how you say the name, started working on tools for Visual Studio Code and Godot programming. And I want to talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to do two things in this video. First, talk about why I use Visual Studio Code, show you a few functions it offers that are very useful for development in general, and then I'll talk about this plugin and show you its functionality. If you want to jump directly to uh, the plugin installation and how to use it, there's a link in the video description. So why Visual Studio Code? Um, you're looking at some GD script here, and I'm going to show you um, something different, another language, and that's the GD Quest website. That's how I program it. And this is the first reason. I do all of my code in one editor. This is very convenient for me. So on top of that, I also do some Python programming for Blender, and I use the same tools for every language I use. I'm starting to do a bit of JavaScript, ECMAS 6 as well, and I can do all of that in VS Code. The editor is lean, it's very well designed, even visually speaking. It's fast, and uh, yeah, it's modern. So you will find the basic tools you want to have to edit text fast, to be efficient, but at the same time, it's accessible. It's fairly easy to learn and very well documented. I can show you that. Uh, there's a complete documentation on the official website. I used Atom before that, which is another modern editor that's uh, very popular on Windows and Mac. But the thing is, the performances for a long time were a bit, not necessarily poor, but uh, below the ones of Visual Studio Code. Uh, you don't have all the functionality you want out of the box, at least I didn't have, like this uh, minimap on the right, I love to have that. And you have to add plugins for that, and often they make startup slower, and um, they can hurt rendering performances as well. So let's talk about navigation with Visual Studio Code. That's the first thing I love about the program. You can see the minimap on the right side. So I can uh, scroll on my document, but I can also click and drag on the minimap to move anywhere, or I can just click. You have some interesting information in there. You can see a Git related information, everything that's been changed uh, since the last commit, the lines that have been added, if I select something, you can see that all of the instances, all of the occurrences of this highlighted expression get marked on the minimap. I know where I can find the selected sequences, for example, or bpy.context.selected sequences. So this is all uh, code I use for video editing in Blender. These are uh, tools I, I make. On top of that, I can just create as many cursors as I want with Alt-click, and they show up on the minimap. I know all of the lines where there is a cursor. I don't know if they are selected and up to what point, but I know that they are there. There are lots of operations you can do with all of these um, selections, like delete all of the lines where there's a cursor very quickly, or you can move them around, you can duplicate them, very easily. So you can also insert a new line above your uh, selection. So yeah, it's you have lots of operations that work with all selected lines at the same time. There's another feature related to navigation that's very powerful. When you control click on something, you will get some hints about where this variable or function or method is, where it was created. For example, if I go to my find next sequence method and I control click on it, VS Code knows that it's in another file. It opens it for me and it selects the method name itself. So at any point, I can go to the definition if I have a bug, like the, the source function, and just modify it. I can also go back to my file with just Alt left arrow or Alt right arrow. You navigate just like with folders on your computer or in a web browser. Talking about selection tools, um, you can just double click to select any word. 
one thing I really like is the ability to expand the selection to a block or the quotation marks, for example. So if I press Shift Alt right arrow, it's going to expand the selection. And then I can just write whatever I want instead of that. I can expand again to the next block, expand again to the next block, or I can shrink the selection to the previous block. I told you that you can highlight all of the occurrences of your selection in the file. If you press Ctrl D, you're going to select the next occurrence. And every time you press it, you're going to select the, the next one until VS Code is done like it has looped over the file. Every time there is bpi.context.selected sequences in the file, it's selected and you have a shorthand to select everything. It's Control F2 and then you can replace it with something else. Um, this is very useful to modify the name of a variable in the, in the file, for example. Next up, I'm jumping back to the website where there's a lot of indentation. Just to talk about indentation. It's quite simple. You can use control open bracket or closing a bracket to just change the indentation of the current selection. And as you know, uh, GDScript is an indent based language. I can fix, you know, any issue you would have with uh, indent. One thing that's very useful if you press control shift G, um, you have Git integration. So I mentioned the fact that on the minimap, you see the lines that were added and all that stuff since the last commit. Uh, I didn't mention that, but you have a folder tree. You can collapse everything if it's getting messy. I should add that you can navigate methods and uh, variables you have in your open files. You can navigate files as well. I can see all of my uh, script files. So for example, you can open another one with the command palette. You press Control Shift P for that and you remove the uh, symbol you have by default and this will allow you to navigate files. All in all, it's a very polished editor and uh, you don't have to add too many extensions because out of the box, it does a lot of stuff. In particular, if you're a web developer, uh, I think there's a lot of built-in functionality for that. If you look at my installed extensions, I do have a number of them because I work in a number of different languages, uh, at least five or six, you know, I wanted syntax highlighting for Tamil, for Go template. Um, and I do have some plugins as well that bring functions from the Atom editor that I used before, like the ability to join lines. So this is uh, a shorthand to quickly collapse lines together. So just try it out if you want. And now we are going to move on to the Godot tools, see what they have to offer specifically. To install the Godot tools, you have to go to the extensions. It's uh, Control Shift X by default, or um, you can just click on this icon, which will be on your bar in uh, the default version of the editor, and you just search for Godot, and you will find it. You know, it's this one. It's Godot tools, uh, the one that has you know five stars. So you just click on install. If I I'll uninstall for you and show you. I can click on install. And there you go, it's going to do it automatically. Um, then it's, it's done. You don't have anything else to do. Let's take a closer look at the functionality. First of all, it will give you syntax highlighting for GDScript files, everything named .gd, as you can see here. Second, if you press Control Shift O, it will allow you to quickly access the variable and method definitions. So you can see variables, you can see constants, and if I go down with this uh, box icon, these are methods or functions. Next up, when you hover on anything, any function, including something that's built in Godot, you will get its definition and a quick helper line. And if I click on the object itself, this is a recent feature, so it's not very, very clean you can see the full documentation, just like you would have in the Godot game engine. Then if you keep the control key down, you can click on anything and VS Code will jump to the variable or method definition, the place where it's defined for the first time. Um, also, if that comes from another file, it will work. 
You get method signature as well. If I define a new variable, uh, something, and I create a vector two, when I open the parentheses, you can see that it tells me you need a float X and a float Y to create your vector. So I can type uh, 4.6, 3.2, there you go, you've got your float. And as I was typing, you probably noticed something. Full auto-completion. If I press Control space, the shortcut to open the auto-complete suggestions, you can see all of the uh, functions. Currently, it will index the ready function and uh, process and everything from all of the files in your workspace. That's something that needs to be fixed. Um, but the developer is very reactive, so uh, he already put out like five new updates in one month or something like that. He, he's working very fast. There are some things that you don't get compared to the Godot editor. The main one is debugging, so you'll have to do that in there. Uh, right now it's, it's not available in VS Code. And then there are some extra features like the ability to run the current scene or open the workspace with the Godot editor. In order to use these modules, you have to rebuild the Godot editor with custom modules. So you have to know what you are doing. Uh, I personally don't use that, so I don't really mind. It's all written on the tools readme. You can check that out for more information. So there you go. Um, if you want to use an external editor with Godot, now you have one option at least. Next week, we'll get to work on an actual game. We'll start making some code in the Godot editor.